Hi everybody, it's the 13th of June 2023 and the Prairie Fire C DLC for Armour 3 has just had a big update. So what I'll do is in the description below this video I'll put the links to the various uh, videos and articles you probably want to read and we're just going to have a quick look through it and then we're going to jump in to the editor and have a look at some of the new assets that are in but obviously i'd uh, definitely encourage you to update armor 3 and if you haven't got prairie fire yet for armor 3 you know um why not <laughs> because it's uh, pretty um, pretty amazing so the team behind sog prairie fire is excited to be rolling out our third major update with new vehicles weapons and factions to expand your vietnam war experience the 1.3 update was released on june the 13th and your game should update normally on steam please remember after large updates to verify armor 3 local file integrity in your steam library the MP compatibility data pack has also been updated for non-owners of the DLC to try the assets out or join multiplayer servers with the usual DLC licensing limitations. This is a big update, so strap in. You can watch our trailers on our website, on the Feature Store page, or on the Armour Platform YouTube channel, and they're definitely worth watching. A bigger war. As 1970 approached, the war in Southeast Asia has spread across the whole region with a growing civil war in the Kingdom of Cambodia. In update 1.3, you can now fight the Cambodian Civil War as the Cambodian Army, FANK, advised by the US MEDT Special Forces team and opposed by the Khmer Rouge. In addition, US Marines and Marine Force Recon units have also been added for early and late war scenarios. Each faction is equipped with their own weapons, equipment and vehicles relevant to a number of time frames featured in the DLC. There are 230 new soldier classes able to wear existing uniforms, 9 new vests, 2 packs with 9 variants and 9 new headgear items with 27 variants. Other factions have been upgraded with units receiving new weapons, packs and vehicles. Land and Air Battles. Update 1.3 features 10 new vehicles and static weapons with 36 variants to further expand your gameplay. We've got a new airplane, the MiG-21, and there's a few variants of that. We've got a new helicopter, the CH-47 Chinook, with transport and medivac variants. Uh, joining these is the formidable ACH-47 Guns A Go Go gunship for devastating air support. Two main battle tanks with flamethrower variants, the T-54B and OT-54 on the bad guy side versus the M-48 Patton and the M-67A2 flamethrower. We've got the BTR-50 APC in various variants. We've got uh, the new Mule, which is like a little transport thing, and then the Australian Dirt Ranger, which is a like a Land Rover. Uh, four new APC variants, the M-132 with the flamethrower, the M57 Command and Ambulance, and the M125 with the 81mm Mortar, and the M250 Cal. Uh, five new car variants, BTR40 with the SGM, AA Gun 81mm Mortar, and M20 Recordless Rifle, and new Texas games, and a Saigon Taxi version of the Bohem Bond car. Three new static weapons with variants, new light machine gun, the M1910, the uh, ZGU 14.5mm AA gun and two scope sniper variants of the M250 Cal. And there it is, the M21. Weapons of War. The 1.3 update adds 18 new weapons with detailed animation, sounds, attachments and melee features. And there's various stuff here that you can go... The SVD sniper. So you can go through that and you can uh, read all about it. Um, and uh, yeah, absolutely fantastic. Really, really cool. Uh, so... Let's jump in. So I've kind of set up the editor with some of the new bits for us to have a look at. So this is the new uh, Chinook CH-47. Obviously it's been available in different versions of, of armor as well, on the, in the Unsung mod as well. And uh, maybe those guys have actually helped. But lots of lots of detail. Um, looks really, really cool. It would be nice actually to have... There is another twin uh, rotor helicopter before the Chinook that was used heavily in Vietnam in the early days in like 65 and the, the body almost had a V shape to it I can't tell you what it was but it would be nice to have that for some of the early stuff um, yeah different variants there so if we come over here these are actually Marines <laughs> wandering around this is a squad of Marines and then we have the two patterns um, one of them is the flamethrower tank I'm not sure which one but they look pretty cool don't they Oh, this is the little mule. It's like a utility vehicle that you can drive around the base for moving things around. 
Obviously that one's got a machine gun on. Not much armour though. That one's full of um, supplies. And if we sprint over here, past these marines, we should be off to see the Australian uh, Land Rover. These are really cool actually. These might be a sort of long range desert group vehicles from World War II, like the SAS used. Like the Pink Panther. Very nice. Very good. So then, if we run across here, I've got the couple of um, North Vietnamese tanks here, or Russian tanks. So we can have a look. I've got the infinite stamina cheat on, so we can just run as far as we like, for as long as we like. And here we have the uh, T-54, did we say it was? Really nice models. I think I've got high textures on at the moment. Again, one of these is the normal version, one is the flamethrower version. Very nice. Very, very cool. The guys are putting so much work, haven't they? Now, up here, this is where we've got the new MiG, but I've also spawned in an F-4 Phantom just so you can compare the sizes of these two aircraft. And you can see the absolute difference in size. Look at this. So the MiG-21 is a single-engined, uh, single-seat uh, fighter, Soviet era, obviously. And here we have the F-4 Phantom, twin-engined, twin-seat, um, way better radar, um, much more expensive aircraft. Uh, and it really is fascinating how, I mean, it, well, and scary as well. If you look up um, F-4 versus MiG-21 and look up the number of F-4 losses, not necessarily against MiG-21s, but the number of f just purely Phantoms that were lost over Vietnam over the course of the war, it is uh, an amazing figure, an amazing figure. Um, and the majority of them were shot down by um, anti-aircraft fire, so flak, machine guns, uh, that sort of stuff. Um, which obviously is why the Americans, after you know, after the Vietnam War, and then you know, in the 70s and 80s, developed um, laser-guided bombs, stealth aircraft, so that you could hit targets from much higher up. And also aircraft like the um, the A-10 tank buster. Um, which could uh, take a lot more ground fire. Because it was always a little bit odd, wasn't it, the fact that you'd have these amazingly sophisticated carrier aircraft, um, very, very expensive, that could do these um, unbelievably jobs, you know, travel faster than the speed of sound, and yet they were um, ground support aircraft in a way that you think, well, you, you, you know, you would use something else. I mean, I guess they had the Sky Raider, didn't they, to start off with. So there we go. So over here, look at that lovely South China Sea sunset so here we have a couple of variants of the MiGs iconic looking aircraft um, and I guess we should have a look round shouldn't we in the, da in the cockpit very nice See if I, if I can remember how to um, throttle up. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> we just made it off the edge of the runway. Away we go.
Look at that. <laughs> There's the airfield. Hard turn. And where are we going to the wild blue yonder? So there we go, the latest SOG Prairie Fire update for Armour 3. Lots of cool content. I'm sure there's going to be some amazing missions created. Um, and uh, yeah, it's always a pleasure. Anyway, what do you think? Put your questions and comments down below. And I will of course see you again soon.